We've been covering the dispute in conservative media between The Daily Wire, a major conservative uh, content publisher, uh, where of Ben Shapiro's site, Jeremy Boring, Matt Walsh, Candace Owens, and others, their dispute with Steven Crowder, who's a conservative YouTube star who doesn't like the terms of the contract they offered him, and is, in fact, so offended by it, he is accusing them of being in bed with big tech. Uh, Crowder was on Tim Pool's show last night to give his version of events. Let's play some of that. You go to The Daily Wire. They say, here's a term sheet. You go, whoa, this is crazy. Right. Hey, you can't do this. The Daily Wire then says, all of a sudden, you're not also, but a few months later, Crowder registers Stop Pick Con. Yeah. Then he calls and secretly records Jeremy. He was setting us up. This email right here paints a different picture in that you talked with The Daily Wire and said, here's our issue. Yeah. Here's what we can't do. And they said, okay. And then sometime later, they try. No, they said, if that's the issue, this is our business model and you right. don't know business. But then they try yeah. and poach one of your employees. So this is uh, really getting, uh, I guess, not out of control, but it's a big, it's heating up. It's a big deal, this dispute. Uh, Crowder says that the terms of, of the contract they offered him, so, so basically the issue is, in the contract, it said if he gets demonetized on uh, various platforms, then they're going to start deducting how much they pay him. Uh, they're going to start subtracting the total amount they pay him. And initially, when people heard that, they were pretty outraged by it. Then it later came out, but the total amount they're paying him is $50 million over three years, and also he has to pay staff, et cetera. It's still a lot of money. Then I think people were much less sympathetic, and also Jeremy Boring, the, the co-founder of Daily Wire, did a long video where he explained, where he tried to say, "Look, this was our opening bid. This is the what, this is a document we sent him. We could have negotiated with him further if he didn't like specific aspects of it. But but bottom line is, we were offering him a huge amount of money. It's not that we like having to punish people if they get taken down on YouTube or, or else. We hate that. But the reality is, if if you're not being monetized on those platforms, you're then not worth that amount of money. Mm -hmm. So we can't we." Can't can't just give you millions and millions of dollars if you're no longer able to realize value for us, mm -hmm. like we're running a business here, mm -hmm. which I, I think is a pretty persuasive argument, frankly. So but What kind of things is he being demonetized? What kind of statements? So Steven Crowder, he's a very provocative conservative. Uh, he's, he's gotten in trouble, I think, for, uh, for COVID stuff. For, he interviewed Alex Jones on a show once, just kind of let Alex Jones say whatever he wants to say. And again, he, the Daily Wire and Crowder, and, and probably even you and I on some of this stuff, agree that th these policies that the various platforms have to punish you, I mean, we've gotten unfairly punished. Sure. I, I, think it's, I think it's BS a lot of times. They're not saying they like that, but that's just the reality. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you, you can't, you can't like, expect that amount of money and then just, but with no strings attached, no matter what happens, we're gonna keep giving you that amount of money, is the daily, what the Daily Wire said. Crowder has said, but you're values driven. You have said your values are being against the whole big tech model, and yet it's written into your contracts that this is how you operate. And then he's tried to suggest that he's more upset about, not, it's not for his own sake, but for how they might treat like a younger, he keeps using the word kid, although it could be a person of any age, but a person starting out in conservative content creating, and, and he would describe them as being, as being shackled to this contract. And then he had a conversation with Jeremy Boring where he surreptitiously recorded Boring say, uh, saying, uh, saying what, whatever he said about how that would be, you know, that would, they'd be wage slaves yeah. for a little bit. And uh, he's kind of been playing that as a gotcha. Um, and the people, the people at the Daily Wire and a lot of people are really upset that he would, you know, like secretly record what used to be a friend and then try to humiliate them. So that's where the state of things is. Uh, let's also play Candace Owens. So, so a lot of Daily Wire people are firing back, defending the Daily Wire. Candace Owens has in multiple interviews. She was on Tim, uh, Timcast as well. She recently said this, I believe, on her own podcast. Let's play that. Over the weekend, I was given a lot more information regarding Steven Crowder, a lot more background information regarding what could have possibly led to this moment. And not to my surprise at all, obviously, this really doesn't have anything to do with the Daily Wire. And his actions are a symptom of much, something much larger. And I want to choose my words very carefully here because I'm not angry anymore. Steven has a lot going on. I guess is the best way to say it. He has a lot going on, and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this 
if there's not a lot going on in their lives. You don't sell out your friend. You don't record conversations. These things are actions of individuals that are perhaps acting out of desperation. You have to dig deeper. You have to look deeper to fully understand the picture of why somebody might do that. And it's certainly not because somebody is upset with a $50 million contract. And because I now am more aware of certain information, rather than being angry, I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to this situation not to condemn him, but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. You know, Stephen purports to be a Christian, and I believe that he needs to lean into his faith. And uh, I am certain that in the near future, more information will come out. I do not think it is my place to say more than that. Well, probably what I should say is I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. So I saw many people talking about this as a kind of a threat. Yeah, that was a threat. Blackmail. That was a threat. <laughs> I don't know what she's referring to. Uh, previously, her and other Daily Wire people have suggested that, you know, Crowder may sound like he's just doing this. Uh, th this is a moral stance. But, of course, in, in positioning himself against the Daily Wire and framing them as compromised, including with big tech, he's trying to, he's calling more attention to himself. He can launch an independent channel and say, like, well, but I, you know, I will never be lie to you. I'll never censor myself or hold back. I'm not beholden to this big corporation, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's a shtick people do. Mm, all I, the time. I, I think that's a, <laughs> I think that's a, we know some people who've done that. <laughs> I think uh, that's a fair criticism from them. I don't know what she's getting after there in, in turn. That was Insane. Yeah, there's obviously some saying. implication that there's something going on in his personal life that she's, you know, not going to talk about right now, but might him. talk about in the future. If he keeps talking. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. As someone who's not involved in this media sphere, it, a couple of things strike me. One, the need for all of the other uh, content creators to weigh in seems odd. It seems like they should just stay out of it. And I don't know that this necessarily makes Daily Wire, Daily Wire look better. Um, if it were a normal employment context, I think everyone would be told to not weirdly gossip and make public statements about internal company going goings on. It's also a little odd to me that there is like a circling of, a, of the wagons around management. I guess everybody else's contracts are very good. Um, <laughs> well, they're $50 million. What are you? You'd feel pretty, uh, pretty positively disposed towards your management if they were giving you $50 million, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, it, we'll see. It would be interesting to know. Even you, Brianna. <laughs> even the, uh, the unionizing progressive crusader. Well, I, I would presume that there was something in my contract terms that I could guarantee by money, regardless mm -hmm. of whether or not I had some criticism of management. You know, I've you yeah. know, been allowed to be critical of things that, here at the Hill that I've disagreed with in the past, and I wouldn't be here if I felt like I was precluded from doing so. No, right. I, I, I joke, but they it. disagree all the time. Uh, you know, Ben and Ben Shapiro has did eventually start criticizing Candace Owens for her perceived defenses of Kanye, Kanye West. West. Perceived defenses. Yeah, act, literal, <laughs> actual defenses. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, look, I think it's definitely interesting. It's good content. Maybe that's why everyone's... Uh, yeah. Uh, allowed, if not encouraged, to go ahead and weigh in. Yeah. Um, it, it would also, you know, I think it is, does seem to be likely that Crowder is setting himself up for a departure. It's just unclear to me why it is that he is quite so upset about what is ultimately a very lucrative contract and also one that only is imperiled if he gets canceled on the social media outlets. Mm -hmm. So unless he thinks he's being censored or demonetized, rather, for unfair things that are outside of his control, it seems like a kind of a, yeah. an easy work. Well, and around. he said he's already demonetized on YouTube, so he was very worried about that being in the contract. Like, he's already in that state. The Daily Wire people said, like, okay, again, we just, this was just kind of a boilerplate thing we put in front of your face. We could have negotiated it. If that was going to be a sticking point, we could have changed that. But you abruptly cut ties with us and then weeks later started attacking us, which and maybe that and then maybe in that clip with Tim Pool, it sounds like he's kind of disputing that timeline. So I don't know. The thing I think that is is not totally wrong with what Crowder is saying is that there is this kind of uh, condemnation of big tech and the platforms without a lot of by organizations that do have to work with them. And maybe that's fine, but 
but it is something that's going on. Then where I'm, but what I, I think the Daily Wire does get right is that it's just not, perhaps they didn't frame it in a way so that he could understand it necessarily. Right, but, but this is the same thing that's been going on with the Twitter files. It's like there's a narrative that says uh, the big tech is like evil and out to get you. But we're, what we're seeing a lot of is, you know, even even the government, even the CDC is feeling misled by government or by mm -hmm. farm or by big pharma. It's all of these corporations that have competing interests that are fighting for what their own interests are. And it's 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 not this like evil, nefarious, uh, you know, mm -hmm. big headed monster that it's being framed as being. So, yeah, like it doesn't surprise me or strike me as especially hypocritical that the head of this conservative media outlet would both not like the censorship and also want to create. Uh, contract terms that business accommodate business for right. this. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is capitalism. No, right. I agree. People want to make money, and these are the consequences. They will censor you for money. That is the whole I point also of capitalism. Agree, <laughs> and I also agree with them that it's a really low move to record someone you think you're friendly with mm -hmm. without their permission and then leak that. Although, on Tim Pool's show, Crowder brought up but we all applaud this. We, being everyone in the conservative movement, applauds this when James O'Keefe does it, when he's calling to light abuses in, in big government and big corporations, big media corporations. We all applaud it. And that's what I did. And you're saying there's something wrong with that? Mm. I think that's kind of a good. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't entirely understand the moralizing around the recording of the call. Sometimes it's illegal to record a call, one sided, depending on what state it is, but assuming that there's no actual legal implications here. They can say that they're friends. I don't know what their relationship is, but this was a kind of a business negotiation context. And, you know, people keep record calls for their records. They know what was said, so they know what they should be arguing. Mm -hmm. Leaking it and the recording it, I think, are two kind of separate things. But I don't know. I'm very interested to see how this all plays out. Well, both Crowder and anyone in leadership at The Daily Wire, standing invitation to come on and make their case if they would like. We'll be back with more Rising right after this.